guys. Well, as promised, December has come roaring in like a polar bear. And I have no doubt it will go roaring out like a musk oxen. Good fucking God. Dealing with this goddamn shit. Day one. Day one of December 2022. It is a Thursday. It is five a five o'clock on a Thursday, December 1st, and it is dark outside. Pretty much completely dark. And uh, so anyway, as you will not be surprised to hear, I have uh, been spending a lot of my, actually I've been spending a lot of my time out in my greenhouse, in my solar powered greenhouse, but uh, back in my little, uh, in my little cubicle, doing what I do with my life now, which is uh, wade around in all of the Doomer porn down in, uh, I have dug up in medium.com. So last night, <coughs> I introduced you to one of my uh, new friends. I have a new tranny friend. Uh, Lanny the tranny. Lanny Rose from Santa Cruz, California. So I was checking out some more Lanny, and she uh, was uh, reading her column uh, you know, in defense of suicide, that if, if people want to kill themselves, let them kill themselves. What the hell? Why not? There's some mainstream media article that San Francisco is spending now, the price tag is now mushroomed to $400 million dollars. $400 million to build a suicide net along the Golden Gate Bridge. $400 million. So in the article, since the, uh, since the bridge was built, that 2,000 people have exercised what should be their legal right to uh, jump off the Golden Gate Bridge and put themselves out of the misery of being a human. 2,000 people exer exercise what should be their completely legal right to do, and now they're talking about spending $400 million of taxpayers' money to keep some other clueless moron. Well, not clueless moron. Not, you know, some of them are clueless morons and some of them aren't, but whether they're clueless morons or not really... Uh, has nothing to do with it. Uh, so I did not, if my third grade math is correct, I think with all of these zeros rolling around is 400 million divided by 2,000, I think is 200, that comes out to $200,000 per person. $200,000 per person to spend on some, uh, you know, to keep people from killing themselves uh, who would only have figured out another way to kill themselves if they didn't have that uh, option available to them. So I spent $400 million. Can you imagine what uh, we could do with $400 million on the, uh, uh, other than building a fucking suicide net uh, on the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, anyway, uh, I need to send that to Lanny and get her to write a story. So, But anyway, uh, I just read a, a Lanny piece, but, but she was recommending, you know, she always recommends when she writes a piece, you know, kind of what gave her the idea for her piece. And uh, so she said, if you want to read a, a better story than mine, and I'm going to put the little dog up here, she uh, recommends, not ex I, I guess this could be construed as a pro-suicide piece from a fellow I have never heard of, but I think I will follow him. He has 
thousand followers. Harry S E I T Z. Harry Sites. He calls himself a writer and returned Peace Corps volunteer. And uh, he looks like in his photo, uh, it, he looks like he's about 22 years old, but who knows. Uh, so anyway, this was Harry Seitz's essay weighing in on the subject from July 13th, titled, I'm Done. I'm Done. What good has human companionship ever done for anyone anyway? There you go. So not sure uh, if Harry is the old man he claims to be. Or is that a, no, that is an I. Uh, I'm not sure if this is just a picture of Harry's grandson or, or, or what's going on with all of that. Uh, I really, really like the graphic uh, he chose for the story. But anyway, take it away, Harry, whoever you are, however old you are, and tell us why you're done. <clears throat> I'll wake up at 5 a.m. every morning to go to a job I cannot stand. The subway is so crowded that cramming myself aboard always seems impossible. There are just too many damn people. But after enough jostling and pushing, I somehow squeeze in. By the time I get to work, I'm already exhausted and frazzled. One morning, I decided to give up. I wasn't going to keep fighting just to climb aboard a stinking train, but the crushing hordes carried me in with them. The same is true of running through cramped tunnels to reach connecting lines. It takes me three trains to get to work. I had finally had enough and tried to just walk, you know, like a human being, but I couldn't. I would have been trampled to death. Well, I guess that's a good way to off yourself, Harry. Just get trampled uh, to death by your fellow humans. <clears throat> Whenever some old or crippled person is wheezing their way up the stairs to a platform, the dozens or hundreds stuck behind them don't feel empathy. We feel rage. It's the same when a person in a wheelchair holds up a bus. People groan and curse. I've overheard several say that the disabled should just stay at home and stop getting in everyone's fucking way. And if you said this loudly enough for the disabled person to hear it, who already looked mortified by the spectacle they were causing, the worst thing about working 70 to 90 hours a week almost every day is that once you do finally get a day off, you feel like you have to do something because training us since childhood to wake up too early to go to some place we hated was not enough. We also had to be sold on the idea of living our lives to the fullest or going out and blowing whatever money or more likely credit we had left on pointless, expensive distractions when all we really want to do is go to bed. It isn't safe to let people feel comfortable being alone and doing nothing. They have enough peace and quiet to contemplate just how cruelly absurd the fiasco we call living actually is. All of this work for a crappy apartment 
I can barely afford and rarely occupy during my waking hours. And on my one day off, I feel like a loser just for staying in and actually enjoying it. There's nothing better than lying in bed for 14 hours reading or taking three naps a day. And once you have a few days off in a row, you realize just how truly exhausted you are. But you're supposed to be out mingling or having brunch with your friends or paying to go to theme parks or vacations to Belize so you can sit on your ass in another country drinking margaritas and feeling like you ought to be doing more. Like seeing the Mona Lisa or the Eiffel Tower. But all you really want is to go back home to your own bed. And as far as mingling, I've realized I'm done with it. I have absolutely nothing left to say to anyone. This is, this is exactly what my mother used to say uh, for the last, uh, good Lord, uh, for the last 15 years of my mother's life. She pretty much holed herself up in her own little cave back in our com converted garage, and, and I would get exasperated uh, with her. You know, my, my mother uh, could have had all the friends she ever wanted, and, and, and I would say, Mom, get out, and, and you know, I don't know if I use the word mingle, but that's what I was implying, and she would look at me and roll her eyes and tell me, I have already met everybody that I ever want to know as long as I live. So I think uh, that's basically the philosophy he's talking about. <clears throat> I have absolutely nothing left to say to anyone. Every attempt at a relationship ends in disaster, and the only decent conversations I have are with other old men just as jaded and defeated as I am. They say things like, what a crock of shit, but at this point, I wouldn't know what to do with myself without my miserable job. I'd probably just sit on my couch and drink myself to death which is what I'm doing already. All I can say to cheer them up is that someday we'll die and this bullshit will be over. We may not be able to get decent wages, health care, or a job that doesn't work as like beaten mules, beaten mules, but we will die and no one can stop us. No more paperwork, no more asshole managers, and no more commute. If there is a hell in the afterlife, we're already in it. And as far as the blank void or whatever lies beyond life, which is probably nothing, I'm willing to take my chances some people ask why I drink and smoke incessantly and look so glum. Don't I want to be healthy and live a long, fruitful life? I tell them that at this point, I can take life or leave it. I've had a pretty good run, or I've at least lived for long enough to know that I am doomed to failure. And with each day a carbon copy of the last, if I live one more day or a week or a year, what's the difference? They say there's still a... They say there's still a... They say there's still a... Uh, uh, <coughs> <coughs> 
they say <coughs> dreams or win the lottery or whatever but each day I grow slower uglier weaker and meaner and I know that I am not the kind of person who ever wins anything especially the lottery it's always some old people from Idaho who already have money. And I have, I had a much better chance of meeting any woman at all 20 years ago when I was still young and stupid enough to have a modicum of her. When I was still young and stupid enough to have a modicum of her, the her, the her, of a modicum of her, oh. So, no more brunches or futile conversations with women. For me, I have moved from the social bars to the old man bars, which suit me much better. We just sit in silence getting hammered because we know this is as good as it gets for people like us. So why ruin it with small talk? When you want another beer, you just tap on the bar and the bartender already knows we all want the cheapest, most potent poison available. Occasionally, Someone may have to grunt, but the aura of regret and apathy appeals to me because I would rather be honest than happy. And I cannot stand people who are determined to be happy. The world can make us eat shit and treat us like garbage, but we do not have to pretend to like it. <laughs> there you go, brother. And, and I'm assuming Harry Stites really is an old man, and he's just joking with that picture of that attractive young man uh, in, his, uh, in, in his photo, because I don't think a young man can understand what uh, you, you have to be a certain age to start to get to the point, uh, you, you know, just, just how fucked you, just how fucked we all are. And, and probably old women can, can say about the same thing. You know, give it the fuck up. Give it the fuck up. Like I'm going to meet some fucking woman of my dreams. I'm 63 fucking years old. I haven't met the woman of my dreams yet. Well, I met the woman of my, uh, uh, my damn dreams. And uh, I think that uh, she's probably uh, sedated uh, in a rubber room right now. As far as I know, that the woman of my dreams, who obviously uh, I, I'm going to be obsessed with till the day I die, is a uh, is somewhere on the spectrum be, be, between a, a a you know bipolar or uh, or not bipolar that other one borderline somewhere between borderline and schizophrenic probably locked up in a fucking institution. Uh, good for you, darling. Good for you, Dulcinea. Uh, I, I'm jealous. Are you getting some good fucking drugs in there? Yeah, I, I, like, uh, like I'm going to meet the fucking woman of my dreams. I, if I do meet the woman of my goddamn dreams, she's either going to be locked up in a fucking nut house 
or uh, her husband's not going to take kindly to me falling in love uh, with his wife uh, or whatever uh, because the woman of my dreams, I will be nowhere in her fucking dreams. It ain't going to happen. I I'm going to be living alone, uh, getting older, uh, uglier, and weaker, uh, and, and, and more and more broke and run down uh, and just f fucked. Uh, and, and until the fucking day I die, uh, sitting here talking to myself and, and, uh, and, and making small talk with my imaginary little friends out there on YouTube. Waiting around to fucking die. Anyway, I do want to thank Lanny Rose uh, for... Uh, sending me over there today. You know, I, I, I keep having this ridiculous fantasy that I'm going to start writing for medium.com, and, 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 but everything I have to say has already been written. There's nothing that I could add to that. Harry and Lanny have already said it all. We're fucked. We're fucked. But anyway, the little dog says, Bop, before you jump into a suicide, $400 million suicide net, could you please go get me my dinner? That I want my goddamn dinner. I have to go feed the dog and pour some poison to get me through another night in hell. Bye, guys. Yes, hold on.